this way out. Okay, great. Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here today. Um, today, um, we are all gathered here today uh, because we're doing something really important, which is uh, working together, collaborating, recognizing that uh, our work is uh, for the people and to ensure their safety and to ensure that there is justice uh, in our systems. And today, I'm really uh, glad to, to be here standing here uh, with our Commissioner of Public Safety, uh, Bob Jacobson, and our Director of the BCA, Drew Evans, uh, and, and our Chiefs locally here in Ramsey County, Chief Axel Henry from St. Paul, thank you for being here today, uh, Chief Scheider from Roseville, and uh, Chief uh, Brian Beardeman from Maplewood, as well as uh, Under Sheriff uh, uh, Mike Martin from the Ramsey County Sheriff's Office. So today, uh, we're here today to call attention to a really critical issue about ensuring that we have faster turnaround times at the forensic lab to work on the cases that ultimately should be coming to the Ramsey County Attorney's Office for prosecution. Because of the uptick in violence and cases that are, uh, uh, and, and incidents that are happening in our community, we have experienced a, a significant backlog in the ability uh, to do DNA testing, especially on gun cases. And, and this has become a real issue about how long it takes uh, to get justice in the criminal justice system. And then, of course, most importantly, and why it's so important here for law enforcement is the investigations. Like, oftentimes, we can't even get the case presented to our office because we're still waiting for laboratory tests. So, to, so as a part of these conversations, um, I just really want to call out and thank um, uh, BCA Superintendent Drew Evans, who uh, recognized right away that this is a real issue for my community here in Ramsey County. And so we worked on a, a way so that we could prioritize some of the cases out of Ramsey County, and we locally are providing some funding uh, to make that happen for, uh, for the next year. But the reality is, is that a local unit of government shouldn't have to do this. Um, and what we also want to call attention to is the leadership of our governor and lieutenant governor, as well as our commissioner of public safety, who have also um, been advocating for this at the legislature. They have an important vision uh, around public safety, which is to get to 30 days turnaround time uh, for uh, these uh, laboratory tests that we need to, in, to do the investigations and to seek justice in the criminal justice system. And so they have, uh, uh, in the governor's budget, there's $6.1 million, and then I think $5.some million for the second part of the biennium. But that will help realize uh, uh, this vision of getting to 30 days turnaround time for the entire state of Minnesota. And we are all here today to um, lend support to that, to tell the public, and to encourage the legislature to pass that appropriation because it will make a difference in our ability uh, to investigate and solve crimes uh, and then also to bring perpetrators to justice. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to um, our Commissioner of Public Safety, Bob Jacobson, Jacobson to say a few words, and then uh, we'll have our next speaker after him. So come on up here, Bob. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, uh, Mr. Choi, again. Uh, I'm Bob Jacobson. I'm the commissioner of the Department of Public Safety for the state of Minnesota. Solving any crime is dependent on many pieces of a puzzle coming together. Unfortunately, right now, victims of those crimes and local law enforcement agencies are having to wait too long for one important piece, the scientific evidence. Over the past several years, Minnesota has seen a dramatic increase in violent crime. As the state's crime lab, our Bureau of Criminal Apprehensions Forensic Laboratory is where most of the evidence in these crimes comes for testing. But right now, the demand for testing far outpaces the BCA's capacity for that testing, and that has led to a testing backlog. We recognize that more resources are needed to keep pace with the demand for forensic testing, and we need additional funding to get that done. That is why we support 
Governor Tim Wallace's and Lieutenant Governor Flanagan's funding proposal for additional scientists and staff to help the BCA achieve a 30-day turnaround time for all forensic testing. And we urge the legislature to support this goal. We appreciate the support of the city, county, and law enforcement leaders that are gathered here today. But make no mistake, we stand up here united for this initiative. And we truly stand up here in support of all of the victims for whom our agencies work so diligently to bring answers in situations in which these victims have never asked to be placed. Finally, just know that we can't clear a snowstorm with just simply a shovel. We need additional resources to be able to complete testing faster and provide all local agencies in the communities they serve with the information they need. With that, I'm going to pass it off to our superintendent of the Bureau of Criminal, uh, Criminal Apprehension, Drew Evans. Drew. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Drew Evans. I'm the superintendent of the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension. As County Attorney Choi said earlier, the Ramsey County Attorney's Office will provide temporary funding that will allow the BCA sh to, to shift a scientist to focus solely on Ramsey County violent criminal cases for the next year. This move will happen right away and allow Ramsey County agencies to move more quickly to receive scientific evidence results in violent crime cases. This is a short-term solution for Ramsey County, but we need to do more to address the long-term growing need for analysis of forensic evidence. Between 2015 and 2019, violent crime and weapons cases submitted to our laboratory grew at least 10% every year. Then in 2020, it jumped nearly 30% and that level of growth has persisted. This has led to significant stresses on our ability to analyze all the evidence submitted to our laboratory in a time frame that's acceptable to us. Our scientists have worked to create testing efficiencies, streamline processes, purchase new streamline equipment to maximize our capacity, but we have not met the need. For example, our laboratory completed 730 forensic testing reports and DNA during the month of January, operating at our capacity. But after several years of evidence submissions far outpacing that capacity, we now have a 3,800 case backlog. We can't keep up with the current case submissions or gain ground on that backlog with our current staffing. Currently, our average turnaround time is 142 days, but keep in mind that's rush cases and cases taking much longer. With the funding requested in the governor's budget proposal, digital evidence, DNA, latent fingerprints, and firearms testing, turnaround times will drop to 30 days by the end of 2025. The governor's budget proposal also has a violent crime reduction strategy, which is three-pronged approach one of which is a new and innovative approach to front-end forensic processing that will speed evidence through our laboratories and use data to better inform our approaches to forensic testing. The governor is also recommending funding for a new BCA facility in southern Minnesota that's a laboratory that could process 12,000 pieces of evidence a year, significantly reducing the strain on the overall system, which is what we're looking to do as part of all the scientists that we're uh, is proposing to reduce that turnaround time. Our law enforcement partners in Minnesota communities rely on the BCA to provide this service. Forensic science can provide a key lead that changes the direction of investigation, identifies a guilty party, or clears an innocent person. It is better for all of Minnesota if we're able to provide this evidence testing more quickly and as quickly as possible. This is one way to aid communities to fill gaps as some of our communities struggle to fill police ranks. The governor's funding proposal will help us get there and examine key evidence more quickly, bringing justice for victims of crime across the state of Minnesota. And with that, I will turn it over to Chief Erica Scheider of the Roseville Police Department. Good morning, I'm Erica Scheider with the uh, Roseville Police Department. The increase in violent crime and gun-related crime is concerning not only to law enforcement, but to our communities. The Roseville Police Department has had multiple gun-related investigations where criminal charges were delayed because we're waiting on DNA testing results. And I know Roseville is not alone in our concerns. DNA matching can help us solve crime, improve public safety, and most importantly, hold uh, offenders accountable, but only if we have the resources for timely testing. 
Our communities assume in law enforcement we've got full and timely access to DNA testing in the pursuit of justice. But this is currently not the case. These delays can frustrate uh, and anger crime victims, and if they persist, can erode the community's faith in our criminal justice system. I know the BCA is doing everything they can in light of their limited uh, capacity and the significant increases that we've seen in testing demands. I appreciate uh, County Attorney Choi providing funding to help in the short term here in Ramsey County, but we need to address this challenge statewide. That's why I'm joining everyone here today to ask for the legislative support for this essential and critical funding. Thank you. We sure we have time for a few questions. If anyone wants to jump in with what they'd like to know. Well, I have some follow-up questions for Superintendent Evans, and I'll be, um, so you mentioned the 143 days, but I just wanted to clarify, and you also mentioned rush cases, so can you clarify that? Yeah, so, uh, good question. So the question was about rush cases and how they um, overall impact. There's certainly cases that have led to priorities of our law enforcement partners, county attorney's offices, as they're pursuing cases uh, across the state. And as we've noted, there's a significant increase in some of the violent crime cases. The current process for our laboratory is first in, first out in terms of DNA testing. However, some of these cases we've uh, prioritized over the last year, in particular violent crime. And so we've had to adjust and manage that workload kind of ongoing. So they all play into it. Every time we rush a case, it means the case that was submitted that maybe not at that rush level gets delayed in the testing along the way. So the goal of this and the goal of the legislative support is that we get all testing to 30 days um, across the state in all of our laboratories so we can reduce the number of rush cases that are coming in and requested of our laboratory. Yeah, so it's particular danger to the community, so homicides that, you know, there's an unknown perpetrator, depending on the facts or circumstances around that. It could be a case uh, involving a child, for example. It could be criminal sexual conduct cases um, that represent a particular danger to the community. We have a conversation in our laboratory, with the, whether it be the county attorney's office or the uh, police agency along the way, um, that represents uh, what's most important to their communities. So right now we're sitting on about 3,800 3, cases in our backlog um, is what we're looking at, um, and the cases keep coming in every day. As we noted, the, the significant challenge was in that 2020 that we had about a 30% increase in our DNA laboratory across all of our labs, um, but that number has kind of persisted and remained steady, which is above and beyond our capacity. It's dipped a little bit right now, but that backlog remains in terms of the ongoing cases, and we'll never get to that backlog without additional funding into the BCA. You know, I don't know the exact number. We could certainly look at the, the number, but I would say the high point of the actual demand was in both 2020 and 2021, and we'll take a look um, you know, ongoing. It's remained relatively high and certainly elevated above our numbers from 2019, for example. And lastly on that note, can you speak to the percentage of that backlog that is gun crime cases? You know, I, I'd have to get back to you on, it's a, a good question. I don't have the exact breakdown. I can tell you in terms of actual weapons cases, just for an example for you, um, in 2022 of the 6,120 cases that the laboratory took in, um, weapons cases represented about 800 of those cases, 799 or 13%. I had another question about the lab. Oh, yeah. um, Superintendent, how you mentioned about the jump in cases, has staffing changed over time? So we have more staff than we've had previously. A couple years ago, as part of a sexual assault examination kit initiative, there were several additional scientists that were added. They were for that specific purpose um, at that time, and the violent crime cases in particular is what's driven the, the staff. Currently, right now, um, you know, we ran some numbers just this week, and the, the number of cases that were submitted and then completed in 2022, for example, exceeded our capacity by 6%, meaning the number of scientists, the work they can complete, exceeded um, the number of scientists we have by 6% uh, percent at that time, with the backlog that still remains there. So add the capacity, meaning that we're over 6%, plus the 3,800 cases that are there, so it far exceeds what we can complete. Can you go more into that and where that scientist may have been working before? 
Yeah, so I'll give that and I can certainly let County Attorney Choi give the vision because he's who approached us with the vision and how to, to aid and speed cases through Ramsey County to get better results and clearance rates. The scientist is a current existing scientist. You know, uh, certainly Ramsey County being our most densely populated county uh, in the state along with um, Hennepin, or Hennepin are two of the counties that have um, just simply due to the populations, larger numbers of violent crime. And we saw uh, the, and County Attorney Choi contacted us and said, I'm seeing this issue I'd like to solve more of these, which in theory then will solve additional crimes or prevent additional crimes if we can solve them more quickly along the way. And so that's a current existing attorney, but this funding will allow us to backfill and hire another attorney that will take time to hire, to train and go through that. But that's part of the overall vision and what we're looking for going forward. Hopefully that scientist once hired will move to permanent funding and we'll just have them roll right into the mix and that's the value of this position. But I'll let him certainly talk about the partnership if you'd like to. Yeah, and again, I just <clears throat> really appreciate the partnership here with the, the BCA because um, they listened to some of the challenges that we were having, and the challenges that we were having is, is that an incident, a violent incident would occur in our community, but the case could never, wouldn't be pr uh, presented to our office for us to do anything because the investigators know that we need this type of uh, evidence to be able to proceed in the criminal justice system, or uh, we have already charged a case, but we're waiting for some confirmation about the DNA, and then we can't get the case scheduled for a trial until that time. So uh, all of this was coming to a head, and I think um, there's always this tendency when we have this stress and these challenges to start blaming one another about like what, why is this happening? And I just really appreciate the fact that we actually came together and said these are the needs and the challenges that we have, and instead of, um, trying to th stay within our own lanes and say that you know the, the reason why this is happening is because of somewhere else. Um, we're actually collaborating and we're trying to figure out solutions. I really believe that in order to get through uh, the challenges that we have right now, because we're experiencing things in our community that we haven't experienced for quite some time. And the, the path out of all of that uh, is really working together hand in hand, law enforcement, community, prosecutors, just everybody at the table understanding what each other's challenges are, uh, and then getting to work to try to help each other solve those issues. And I just really appreciate the BCA for recognizing that the, the backlog that they were having was having impacts on our investigations locally, having impacts on how fast cases moved in the criminal justice system. And we want to change that. And I'm confident that we're going to be able to do that. Well, I mean, you have to think about the entire broad spectrum of what's going on. So, I mean, we don't know at some points whether or not the gun that we that we brought in to be tested was also, uh, you know, there was there was ammunition or anything else that's got DNA evidence to it uh, that could could have actually gave us a lead much earlier on. So it's not just about the worst cases, it's about all the cases and getting that information out there and bringing, you know, swift justice to those perpetrators that are out there, but also to support our victims because, you know, the victims don't care about what county the things are happening and, they, they, and they, it's not their problem to deal with the issues of evidence handling. But as the, the whole process moves overall more smoothly, it speeds up every other part of that whole criminal justice process. And that's the key for us is that we have to, um, DNA is a tool. We have a lot of tools we need and when we can make those tools work more effectively and faster, it impacts every other crime out there, not just the most serious ones. No, there hasn't been a change, but I think there's a better recognition of what the law is. Uh, for instance, like on constructive possession, um, when we have those types of cases, clearly the law, the, 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 the appellate courts have stated that you need pretty solid evidence to proceed on those types of cases. Um, I, don't, I don't know the citation of that particular case, but there is one that is kind of guides all prosecutors in the state of Minnesota around the possession cases. Yeah, underneath underneath uh, uh, the seat or something like that, um, there's a higher uh, requirement for evidence in that in that context.
plus DNA secondary back to try to determine, to, I guess, to confirm that the person's the driver? Mm -hmm. Are there other kinds of cases people might not expect? Well, well there's some. You could talk about what the yeah. What so the it, you know, DNA is really in many ways, as County Attorney Choi has noted, it becomes really important in our cases. Not only from proving cases beyond a reasonable doubt, and as the chief noted, it's it's one tool. It's not the only tool, but we are do everything from criminal vehicular homicide to burglaries to thefts to everything in between. So carjacking is a very important tool there, um, especially in those cases where it's most valuable is when we have an unknown perpetrator, regardless of the type of crime. It can lead us to that with the different. Um, convicted offender database that we have available to often lead to identify the perpetrator. And as we note, part of the reason it's so important, as we said in our comments, is it often clears people. So if law enforcement has a particular lead in an investigation, it can quickly clear that person so they can move on to different leads in an investigation. But we're at the point with our DNA lab where we do a very broad spectrum of different types of cases coming through the DNA lab. Yeah, I just wanted to, before we go, I wanted to just hit on one point because I don't want to forget it. I think um, in terms of the importance, Tim, you asked the question about 30 days turnaround time. Um, I think another thing that I want to underscore is that uh, with additional capacity at the lab, um, just our ability to solve cases is going to improve um, as opposed to um, and know, when the investigators know that this capacity is enhanced, they know that they, they can use this as a resource to ultimately solve crimes. You know, we are very proud here in Ramsey County and in St. Paul. We've got an incredibly high clearance rate, solve rate for homicides. It's, uh, I think it's always historically been about 90%. I might think it might have dipped a little bit to about 85% or something like that. 87%. 87 but that's incredible. But I want everybody to hear this. When it comes to the uh, non-fatal shootings, when somebody has not um, been uh, killed, right, our clearance rate, solve rate for the entire county is about 35%. So I think one of the most important things that we can do around public safety is actually catching and identifying the people who are doing the shooting. That's, I think, uh, uh, a common thing across this country right now is that we are having difficulty and challenges solving those non-fatal shootings. And so this type of approach where we're bringing um, more resources to the investigative uh, needs of a, a county can make a whole world of a difference. I think if we can improve those clearance rates, and by the way, 35% is probably leading, I mean, it's probably better than other places across the country. Um, but we, we know that if we put more resources into the investigations and actually catch those suspects who are actually pulling the trigger, that's going to make a huge difference. We have time for two more quick questions. I know there was one in the back. Is it you, as part of your network, like, would you have, if you analyze what you would actually need, either funding wise or body wise, to get you a 30 day? I mean, is it? Is this more lab? Is this more science? Can you put a number to that? Yeah, so it, it's all the above. So the um, in terms of what we're, we're looking for, but in the governor's budget recommendations, it would add 31 FTEs across our different uh, evidence examination. There would be 10 additional DNA scientists. Along these lines, to underscore what County Attorney Choice said, we've talked a lot about DNA today, but when it comes to solving things like uh, uh, non-fatal shootings, the governor's budget proposal has multiple labs that would be involved in that, from latent fingerprints, to our firearms laboratory providing additional leads to that front end processing approach that we'd like to explore in a violent crime reduction strategy. All of that works together to try to bring that down and increase the solve rate. So yes, we have a very specific number that we've projected out based on the current demands uh, and what that would take to get to by 2025. Right. I mean, if people start pulling the trigger and they're not getting caught, um, I think it just it becomes a bigger problem. And that's one of the things that I've been uh, trying to pr get prioritized here locally. And again, uh, the message that I want all of you to hear is that none of that's going to change unless we actually invest in the investigative
process and the resources that these agencies need uh, to solve these crimes. Let's go to the last question. Yes, I, I know we talk a lot about gun crime and this is probably uh, for you, Jerome, but last fall DCA acknowledged a more than six month backlog on rape test kits as well. Is there going to be a specific prioritizing of gun crime or how can we assure some of these victims that their cases are also going to so excellent question. So we prioritize in our laboratory violent crime as a broad spectrum. Criminal sexual conduct cases are involved, in, are, are part of that violent crime prioritization. So with that comes homicides, certain weapon cases, uh, non-fatal shootings, and as importantly, uh, criminal sexual conduct investigations. As an example for you, um, about 28% of all cases submitted to our laboratory last year were criminal sexual conduct uh, investigation cases of the completed number about 32% of the completed cases lab-wide were criminal sexual conduct investigations cases. So they remain a priority for us. They were prioritized last year, and even part of this, they would continue to be a priority for us going forward. That's part of the reason when we talk about, we are looking for 30-day turnaround time for all types of cases coming through our laboratory, and we're taking steps uh, in addition to this, as I've mentioned, from everything from new robotics to process more samples through our laboratory more quickly to examining third-party um, ways to, to contract with our current caseload for property crimes so that when this funding becomes available, we can get to that ground 30-day uh, turnaround more quickly than we would have been able to do before. So we're doing everything we can, but criminal sexual conduct case Cases. They remain long turnaround times, as we've said. That's part of what we're talking about here today. But they would remain in that prioritized category moving forward. And represent quite a bit of evidence of the gun crime. I think you said about 13 Yep, that's, that's right. Now, there's also assaults, which would be non-fatal shootings. There's homicides. So you add all those categories together, you're looking at uh, much closer um, altogether if you add them all up. I'm going to wrap up. summarizes the whole concept around the 30 day turnaround. I have copies for you guys to take away with you. And then all of you will be on the distribution list for each component that we send out. So, um, hey Dennis, just one more thing yeah. I want to just stress too. Um, also too, I think one of the reasons why these, these investments are really critical um, and Mary, you asked the question of what has changed, right? So I talked a little bit about the, what the law is, uh, that that's become more clear that we need higher standards. Uh, but we also, as it relates to proving a case beyond a reasonable doubt, one of the things that we have uh, experienced um, as a part of our work as prosecutors is that we're getting less cooperation from victims and from witnesses. So when that is the case, first of all, I think we should ask ourselves why that is the case and work to try to change that. Uh, I think in many instances it's because the victims and the witnesses don't feel safe uh, participating in a prosecution because they think that they might be retaliated against. But if we can't get that type of information and evidence, then what is really critical is to be able to ensure that we get the, the forensic evidence and the other types of investigative um, uh, tactics that can be utilized uh, to prove these cases beyond a reasonable doubt. So thank you. Thanks, everybody.